Hi, Richard Spizzano here from Digitally Fearless. And while I was playing around, I discovered that Affinity Photo does have text frames. Uh, there are some like strange little things you have to do and tricks you have to play on it, but you can come up with some really interesting things. I thought you only needed publisher or, I, I, or designer to do this, but you can actually do it in Affinity Photo. So the first half of this video is going to show some different kind of techniques. And the second half of this video will show you some techniques on how I created this layout. So let's get started. So I'm just going to start a new file. I'm going to say file, new, it does not matter. I'll just put photo just to place anything there to explain how this works. Now there's certain things you can do and certain things you can't do. For example, if I take a rectangle in the shape tool and I give it a color, say it's a pale blue, even I'll even make it more pale than that. There we go. And I give it an outline like that. That right now is a curve. Well, you can right click that curve and say convert to text frame. And then here's a problem. Now, let's put some text in. Affinity Photo does have some text filler, so you don't have to worry about what you want to type in. So you can just go up to text and hit insert filler and it will put in text for you. So now that we created a text frame, what if you didn't want the frame to be a light blue? Well, you would try normally to go up, but you can't. Like when it's curved, when it was a shape tool, you were able to change the color. But you can't right now. You could try and convert it to curves. And if you convert it to curves, let's see what we have there. That means every letter is going to be converted. So that's not good. So let's say that that way is not a great way of doing things. Let me undo the curves. You could also go to effects and say color overlay and maybe pick a different color, for example, maybe a, a red, an orange, and then put the blend mode on multiply or overlay. But it's not perfect because it's changing the color of your letters also. So that's not going to work. So let's just, just get rid of this completely because that's not worth it. Next thing you can do is you can do the same square or any shape. You can also now convert it to curves and when you convert it to curves, you also have the choice, but the same thing actually happens. For example, now we have a curve, and, and now that we can right-click, let me right-click on the curve and say convert to text frame, and then we say edit, I'm sorry, text, and insert filler text. Well, there's your filler text again. And now, see, now there's color up here. But that is the color of the font. See? So that's not helping us if we decide in the end we don't want a blue background. But we can make the color white, white background, or we can make the color no color, but let's leave it white for now. And then we can convert it to a text frame. And now in that text frame, I could say text insert fill a text and now at least it's on white and of course it's on the edges um, again we have an outline we really would rather not have an outline because if you have an outline you can't get rid of it but you can always go to paragraph and you can indent on the left indent on the right and indent between paragraphs that's it's not seeing that much because I'm not doing that much. There you go. So I'm just clicking the arrow here. I don't know if you might be able to just drag. No, no, you can. You can drag up or drag down. So you can do that. And and space at top column. So that kind of gives you a nice way of spacing everything out. 
So now that we got that, that's just your basics. Now let's kind of go into the interesting, fun stuff. Now, once again, I would prefer not to have a black outline. Once I have it, I can no longer get rid of it because I already converted it. So here's what I'm thinking we should be doing. So let's try another one. I deleted that. Let's try one more time, right? This time, I'm leaving a white fill. I'm leaving no stroke. And then I'm going to write, I'm going to convert to curves, sorry. So it's, it's still, I'm, it's a white fill and no stroke. And now I'm going to right click and say convert to a text frame. And I can, I can just type in myself there, but I, instead of I could do text, insert fill a text. And now look how good that is. Now, why did I convert it to curves? I could have left it as a shape. Well, I converted it to curves because now I can go to the node tool and I can shape it different ways. I can double click here. I can do that. I could take that and right up here it says um, smooth. So I can turn that into a smooth curve just like that. So this is a pretty cool thing that you can do and this is what affinity photo so that's how I started and that's how I got to the first thing that I showed you so and also by the way now anytime you could change text colors and if you did want a border let's leave the text black but if you did want this to have a border instead well let me let me rephrase that if you wanted the text to have a border you can go into where it's uh, character, and right here, not that I really want to, um, I can give that, a, I can give that um, a line and give it a color. So uh, right now, that's, if you look close, I'm gonna move closer. It's black text with that ugly color. I can, let me give it another color so you can see what I'm talking about, but let's not do that right now. Let's put no color there. So. What if you wanted a line like you did before? Well, this time, now instead, go to the effects. And effects, you can do a stroke. Um, what they call an outline, I'm sorry, I'm used to Photoshop. And with an outline, you have to go pretty far out to see it, but you can do that, just like that. And remember, you can also now go to paragraph, and we can indent on either side. Uh, we can only between only at top paragraph and so we can we could put space at top paragraph but then lower I'm sorry then lower that like that so you do have your spacing anyway so that's the basics and that's the differences between outline on the text and outline on the shape so let's create the thing I showed you in the first place so let's delete this let me go to that to this thing and let's see if I could recreate it I'm just gonna delete all of this right now and I'm even gonna take that away so the way I did that was I first took an ellipse tool and I held the shift because I wanted a perfect circle like that all right there we go in fact I'll bring it down a little bit and then let me give it a stroke for now so that circles there, and then I, I duplicated the circle. So I'm clicking, I'm holding Alt, and I'm holding Shift, and I want them to snap together. So that right there. So now I have two circles like that, and then I took a rectangle, and I went from the top here, and I went just like this. Okay, there you go, like that. So. Let me just give this color for now, just so we can see. Oops, that's stroke color, sorry. I don't want stroke. Let's uh, cut that out. Let's give it a fill color, any color. And let's give these fill colors. We'll get rid of the fill colors after. I'm just trying to show where they are. Okay. Okay, so, so if you take this bottom one, 
and move it above the rectangle. And you click, you hold that one and the rectangle. Choose a layer, geometry, subtract. What you do now is it disappears. So now this is a diff this is a shape by itself. And now if you take this one and this one, and you do layer, actually I'm going to, no, that's fine. And we go layer, geometry, add, right? And if you did that, and then you take away the fill to no fill, and as you don't want any stroke, and then you right click and you say, convert to text frame. And then you edit and you fill, I'm sorry, text, and you insert filler text. And the reason you can't see the filler text is because it's white, but there we go. And so there's your filler text. So I put a black background right here, and then I took my filler text and I made it white. That was pretty easy. And then I took another, I could have kept the original ellipse, but I just took another one and I went like this. And this one, I just got it into place like wherever. I'm just gonna try and shape it close enough. And what I did there was I went to the stock photo and I typed in astronaut, if I remember right. A U T, I think, and I found an astronaut. And so let me show you where that astronaut is. Yeah. So here, that was my astronaut, and that's the astronaut that I pulled in. In fact, you know what? Let me just do it right from scratch. So I went to the stock one and I picked an astronaut, and I don't remember which one. It wasn't the same one, I don't think, but let's see. Thought it was. Oh, maybe it was under Pix Pixabay. I did like the purplish tint to it, but okay, this could this could work too. Um, let's take this guy, bring him in, and we'll shrink him down. And when you go to your layers, if you drag him below the ellipse and to the right, then he is inside the circle just like that so that's how i got the astronaut in the circle right. so that's good and then i went to stock photo and i said rocket i believe let's see i'm just going to choose one of these i think that was the one didn't matter and i picked a rocket and and let's keep that on the side for now and I chose another ellipse tool and I kind of did this. I kind of wanted it to shape it something like this. And that's okay, that works. And so now on the layer, that's the ellipse right here. And this is, I'm gonna move, oops, I'm sorry, undo. I'm going to now move this photo in here and put it under and to the right of the ellipse. And now as long as I'm touching the photo, I can put it into place. So that's where the photo ended up. I have to make it big enough to fill the ellipse. I could change the ellipse size to smaller if I want, but in fact, maybe I'll do that. Let's make the ellipse smaller like that so that it fits. And then I'll move everything down. And that's how I ended up with that. Let's do this. And that's how I ended up with that. Now the thing is this text needs to wrap around. So since this is a shape, I should be able to double click and pull this out like that. And of course the text moves around. And then I go to um, smooth. I may be smart. Let's see what happens with smart. That's smart which makes it straight up. And if I hold shift, I can go straight up like that. And I can go straight down like this, just to get them all out of my way. And maybe I want it a little bit closer. 
and maybe the shape of this should be a little smaller like that so that's how I did that so that's how you wrap the uh, text around now let's close all these up get them out of my way I don't need her I'm not that's for a previous thing I was trying to show and that's I don't need that anymore and I don't need any of these so now I'm going to type space magazine okay and let's see if we can do I have my snapping on I do so we should see the snapping lines approximately there I would like it to go close and let's snap that to here okay so now we can do some interesting things and there's two different kinds of outlines if you go to your character tool and that's your character tab right here and go down to decorations and if you click it you can make an outline there or dotted line and you can make it any size you want I'm going to get closer just so you can see let's move these up there we go so right now I made a dotted line uh, and the dotted lines outside it could have been a straight line it could be so many different things and it could be any shape right now I kept I keep the caps in the middle because then that'll if I do it here they were all little round dashes I want the straight dashes so then I'm going to go to the layer where this is the layer let me move it to the front I'm gonna to go to the layer where I just typed the space magazine with the dashes and I'm going to effects outline I'm going to turn the outline color to purple like that and then I'm going to bring up the radius and you have to bring it up a lot until it shows but there you go so I thought that was kind of a cool effect and let's see what else we can do let's lock the background and then if I take all of this I know there's some that I wasn't using from a previous tutorial I was practicing with but I could kind of center that just like that and there you have it so that's how you create text frames and that's how you can use shapes and curves to make the text frames do almost anything you want so I hope you like this tutorial and if you do please click like and subscribe and thank you and have a good day